get into our ongoing coverage of Indecision 2024. Trump has had a good week. He sealed the GOP nomination. One of his 54 trials was postponed. And he just figured out you can Google boobs. <laughs> the man should be on top of the world, but some of his close friends in the right wing media are concerned. And I know you have supporters, uh, friends, family. They say it's lonely at the top. And I'm actually curious is it ever lonely for you? ridiculous question for a journalist to ask. Of course he's not lonely. He saw his wife just six months ago. <laughs> Walter Cronkite over here. Trump answered this question the way he answers every question by saying whatever was on the top of his mind at that moment. I study history and I was always told that Andrew Jackson as a president was treated the absolute worst. He was just really lambasted and I heard Abraham Lincoln was second, but he was in a thing called the Civil War. I don't care, Andrew Jackson or anybody else, nobody has, when you think of the, the fake things, nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Yeah. Yes, in terms of badly, Trump has been treated the badliest. Although maybe Lincoln was treated a little bit worse, what with being shot in the head and all, but... I doubt he was on his deathbed saying, at least I didn't have a P-tape rumor. <laughs> Good point. And, and by the way, how mistreated could Andrew Jackson have been? The man's on the $20 bill. I use that bill every day. It's the one I give to the homeless. <laughs> I asked for $19 back, but that's not the point. I mean, I mean, plus, back then, even if the press wrote a horrible story about you, half the country was illiterate, you know? Honey, did you see that article about Andrew Jackson? No, I can't read. <laughs> I can't read either. Well, then why'd we buy this newspaper? I mean, let, let's move on, let's move on. Because not all the influential, powerful men in the world have been getting such easy questions this week. This morning, a high-profile deal between two unlikely partners imploding. After a confrontational interview between former CNN anchor Don Lemon and Elon Musk turned tense during a taping of the new The Don Lemon Show that was supposed to debut next week on Musk's platform X. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I don't Democrats. have to answer his question. Great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. Hours later, Lemon says he received a short text from Musk that read, contract is canceled. Oh. Now, to be fair to Elon, though, you never really expect to hire someone and immediately be asked about the Jewish great replacement theory. <laughs> Usually you want to wait for the Christmas party to do that, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, between Trump and Elon, when did all these macho men become such pussies? You know, aren't, aren't you the ones who complain about the snowflakes and liberal victimhood? When Elon bought Twitter, he was like, this is free speech town square, baby. And then some, some, then anytime somebody criticizes him, he's like, the, the town square is closed for repairs. This is terrible. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt's critics shot him during a speech, and he didn't even go to the hospital. <laughs> which shows, one, how tough he is, and two, how terrible health care was back then. But, but look, <laughs> these alpha males today get one tough question, and they start whining like my kid when I tell him he can't watch Cars 2 for the eighth time today. <laughs> well, Daddy, it's not fair. Well, you know what else isn't fair, son? It's not fair that I, a grown man, know all the words to Cars 2. <laughs> yeah. It's very sad, Costa. Yeah, it is. <laughs> very sad. Let's move on to the big news in the travel industry. The guy at Boeing whose job it is to change the days without an incident sign got to stay home from work yet again. This morning, an American Airlines Boeing 777 traveling from Dallas to Los Angeles forced to make an emergency landing after reports of mechanical problems. This video capturing the moment the plane carrying 249 people touched down at LAX airport with a possible flat tire. This comes on the heels of several other incidents on Boeing planes in recent days. On Monday, hydraulic fluid began leaking from the bottom of this Boeing 777. Boeing failed dozens of FAA audits with nearly 100 instances of non-compliance after that door plug flew off a 737 MAX 9 in January. Boeing, 
What is going on with you? There should be no leaking fluids on planes. Unless you were the guy on the diarrhea plane. He's, <laughs> he's grandfathered in. He can leak anywhere he wants. At this point, Boeing's competitors barely even need PR departments. They look so good for doing just the bare minimum. Airbus, we don't have any screws left over in the bag. Nice. <laughs> Look, I have to say, at this point, I'm just done with Boeing airplanes. Back to cruise ships for me, where nothing bad ever happens. Well, you know who's not worried about Boeing, does he? Hmm. Me. All right, yeah, a door fell off and there was a leak. But guess what? The plane still landed. Boeing should be advertising that. <laughs> Boeing. <laughs> we forgot some screws, but you still made it to Tampa. <laughs> they agree. You know what's way less safe than flying? Taking a car to the airport. My driver this morning passed a semi-truck by cutting through a playground, so no, I'm not worried about Boeing. The truth is, even with the doors falling off, air travel is still the safest way to get around. So yeah, I'm gonna keep flying. I even flew here today from Brooklyn. So I don't mind if a door flies off now and then. In fact, I wouldn't mind if a few more doors flew off. If more people were scared of flying, I could get through security a hell of a lot faster. I've got all the things, pre-check, Global entry, clear, clear plus, clear plus with ads. And I'm still waiting 15 minutes for a guy to fold up his stroller for the first time in his life. <laughs> and if you disagree, too bad, because planes are the only game in town. What, I'm, I'm not gonna fly to Vegas for my college buddy's fantasy football draft? Grow up. <laughs> Let's move on to some international news because the U.S. isn't the only country having an election this year. Russians will head to the polls for three days beginning Friday to vote in a presidential election. That has Vladimir Putin seeking a fifth term. President Putin is urging voters to cast ballots as a show of patriotism. Every vote you cast is valued and meaningful. Therefore, I urge you to exercise your right to vote. <laughs> you heard Vladimir Putin. Every vote in this Russian election is valued and meaningful, which is why the winner of this race is completely up in the air. That's right. <laughs> Anything can happen, Desi. That's so, right. of course, we're going to go all out with a complete team coverage in another installment of Democracy 2024. <laughs> the election center with Ronnie Chang. <laughs> Ronnie, what are the results? Ronnie, what are the, re what are the results showing so far? Oh, it's a tight race, Michael. Let's look at the map here. The red areas are where Putin is winning so far. He's doing well with urban voters, farmers, dead people, dead people with college degrees, and women inside of larger women inside of larger women. All right. <laughs> Sounds like he's doing great. Can we just call the race for him? Uh, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Take a look at this area right here, just outside of Moscow, okay? You can see he's in real danger of falling below 99% in this region. So we're gonna have to watch that as the night progresses. I mean, it's democracy, anything can happen. Ronnie, Ronnie I think that 1% just went down to 0%. Oh, oh, wow. It did. I want to come back for Putin. I told you, anything can happen. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Yeah. Great. Great analysis. Great analysis. All right. For a look at the situation on the ground, let's go live to Moscow with some fresh exit polls and Tro Troy Iwata. <laughs> Uh, Desi, we're learning a lot about why Russians are so drawn to Vladimir Putin. Uh, listen to these exit poll results. First, 94% of voters said they did not want to accidentally fall out of a window. <laughs> and 96% said they did not want to be poisoned. So those are the top two issues, third being Putin's age. <laughs> okay, so voters are worried about Putin being too old. No, they're saying Putin is so robust for a 71-year-old that he might do too good a job. 
you know? <laughs> also, the falling out of a window thing. They can't emphasize that enough. Yes, yes, I can see how that would be a concern. How much longer are the polls open? Until 9 p.m., and uh, Russian officials are telling voters, if you're in line, stay in line, or there will be consequences. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Troy. I mean, geez, of course. You know, Putin was not running unopposed. So let's go to the opposition's election night party with Grace Kulenschmidt. It's grim. There's no music, no food. We're on an ice flow in the East Siberian Sea, and it's a cash bar. <laughs> Wait, you're on an ice flow? That doesn't sound like you're at a party. Well, it's less of a party and more of a floating prison. <laughs> but whether we live or die out here, it's still less depressing than the Hillary 2016 parties. Oh. <laughs> Good luck. And finally, let's go to the Putin victory party at the Kremlin with Jordan Klepper. Yeah. Jordan. Jordan, you've been to a lot of political rallies. How does this compare? It's great, Michael. No notes. What a win for democracy. Really? You're not going to do that thing where you talk to the kooks who are blindly faithful to their party leader? No, Michael. Everybody is normal here, and I have no reason to question or subversively mock anyone, okay? <laughs> Putin 2024. Russia's a free and open democracy. Speak your mind. Let's hear some cutting barbs. Are you trying to get me killed? <laughs> oh, hey! Hey, Previet, Mr. President! <laughs> Six more years! Six Hundred more years! Yes! Yes! Good luck in November! Wait, wait, he has another election this November. Oh, a big one. Just not in Russia. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Great to see democracy in action.